How can you know when a bow is about to break? Chapter 1. The Stack Myth You may have heard that a stacking bow is at risk of breaking. This is a common myth, and intuitively it does seem right. That feeling when a bow suddenly gets much harder to pull, it really makes you think that bow's gonna break. So what exactly is stack? Casually speaking, it's that feeling of the bow suddenly being harder to pull when you get towards the end of the draw. More technically, stack is the rate of change of the bow's draw weight with respect to the draw length. Or in other words, the slope of the force draw curve tells you how much the bow is stacking at that point in the draw. When the slope begins to increase dramatically, we say the bow stacks. This is a really good example, but correlation doesn't imply causation. Stacking and breakage are correlated. If you want to break a bow, you have to pull it far enough. The further you pull a bow, the more it stacks. So intuitively, it does seem like the stack is responsible for the breakage, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Stacking and breakage are completely independent. Stacking can actually be entirely accounted for by geometry, specifically the string tip angle throughout the draw. Better string angles give the string more mechanical advantage over the limbs. Stack tells you nothing about the material and whether or not it's close to failure. It's purely a geometric property of the string tip angles. So what does cause bows to break and how do we know it's about to happen? The biggest indicator is a sudden unexpected loss of draw weight. This indicates the material is starting to collapse and buckle. It's hard to see on a scale, but you can really feel it. Sometimes the draw weight won't actually drop, but the rate of increase drops. In other words, when a bow is about to break, it might actually stack less. So don't be afraid of stack. It's just geometry. What you really should fear is the ominous feeling when the stack suddenly goes away. Chapter 2. Set. You know when you pull a rubber band too far, and it starts to sag and won't snap back to the original shape? When this happens to a bow, we call it set. In other words, a bow takes set when we stress it beyond the elastic limit of the wood. On a microscopic scale, the belly fibers of the wood begin to crush and buckle. You can actually feel it happening when you draw the bow. In milder cases, the wood will feel a little bit spongier than usual. When it's bad, you'll feel the draw weight drop by a tiny amount. When you feel a good chunk of draw weight slip away, that's really bad. This indicates the bow is about to break or collapse. Different woods respond differently to set, depending on how brittle they are. For some species, a little more set is expected and doesn't necessarily indicate a safety issue. Woods that are very tension strong, like hickory, tend to take a lot more set before breaking. This is because they're relatively compression weak. Just to be clear, hickory actually has a very good crushing strength. It's just so strong in tension that in comparison, the belly is the weak link. On the complete other end of the spectrum, a brittle wood like pine will take much less set before breaking. Osage and yew aren't quite that extreme, but compared to hickory, they are a little more brittle. Brittle woods are more likely to break suddenly without taking a lot of set as a warning sign. So if you have a hickory bow that takes a couple inches of set towards the end of tillering, that's no big deal. It's just par for the course. But if this happens to an Osage or a U bow, you really should keep an eye on things to make sure the tiller is okay and the bow doesn't have a hinge. Brittleness is also affected by humidity. The drier the wood, the more brittle it becomes. This is why tension strong woods like hickory excel at much lower humidity compared to more brittle woods like Osage and Yew. I should clarify that while Osage and Yew are a little more brittle than hickory, they're still very dependable bow woods. I'm not calling them bad bow wood in any sense. Now that said, hickory has more world records in flight archery than Yew or Osage, in part because it excels in the dry conditions at the salt flats in Utah. The takeaway here is that you always want to avoid set if you can but you should fear it more in species that tend to take less set before breaking. Chapter three, other signs of impending doom. One, chrysales or compression fractures. When the belly fibers start to crush and buckle on a visible scale, we call the resulting patterns chrysales 
or compression fractures. Usually you can't fix the issue, but sometimes you can if you're able to correct the bow's tiller before the bow is finished. When this happens to a finished bow, there isn't too much you can do. Dropping the draw weight and fixing the tiller is your best option. Number two, hinges. When a bow bends too much in one spot, bowyers call this a hinge. The treatment is very similar to Cresselle's because both of these indicate too much stress on one spot. The solution is to avoid that spot and work everywhere else. Usually this involves dropping the draw weight of the bow and fixing the tiller. Number three, splinters. When the wood fails in tension rather than compression, sometimes you'll see splinters on the back. This can be a death sentence for the bow, but sometimes you can stop a splinter in its tracks by wrapping the bow with tough thread and saturating with glue. Splinters are a lot more common when dealing with violated wood. This is a common result of poorly chased growth rings or of selecting a board that doesn't have end-to-end -end fibers on the back. Number four, noises. Noises while drawing the bow are not a good sign, especially cracking noises. If you're lucky, it could just be the string rubbing on the string grooves. So make sure to rule that out, and make sure your string grooves are built in a way that accounts for the movement of the string. Ruling this out, your bow may have formed an invisible crack on the inside or on the back. A good way to look for splinters that you can't see is to rub a cotton ball along the back of the bow. When there are hidden splinters, the cotton fibers will snag on the splinter, making it easy to see. Number five, cracks from drying. Finally, I'll cover something that seems dangerous, but actually isn't. Checks happen because the wood dries at a different rate, tangentially compared to radially. So a circle of wood will usually warp into an ellipse as it dries. This results in massive internal forces. The wood is ripping itself apart from the insides. That sounds really bad, but it's actually not a huge deal. Drying checks that only separate fibers don't really affect the strength of the wood. This little thought experiment helps to prove this point. Imagine drawing two bows, side by side. That's the equivalent of one big bow, with an enormous crack, all the way from one tip to the other. Yet the big bow does not break, as long as the two individual bows on either side are okay. All right, that's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, may your arrows fly true.